Welcome back. All right, so we had seven games in the National Hockey League, all of them done relatively early. I did my best to follow as much as I could, but I, I do like that it's busy and then it's done early. Tomorrow, uh, it's seven games again, but they're really spread out. So uh, I'll be able to focus in a little bit more on the games, and yeah, we'll, we'll see how things go. So we're going to start things off, because no time like the present, right? Uh, with the Buffalo Sabres at home against the Tampa Bay Lightning. Now, um, Buffalo, there's there's a bandwagon that's going to start filling up pretty quick here for the Buffalo Sabres. The Buffalo Sabres have been this downtrodden team for a long time. So the idea that maybe they'll turn it around, Melody's got to be pretty happy right now and confused. Um, it was Elliott versus Anderson. Craig Anderson is quickly becoming one of the stories early in the season. One of the big stories. And, you know, 40 years of age, he is showing he can still play in the National Hockey League. Uh, which, for Buffalo, if they're looking for the number one draft pick this year, they're doing a terrible job of it. So there was an early chance for the Bolts. However, Olofsson gets the first goal. He scores from Thompson and Haig at 141. The shots are 3-2 to two in favor of Tampa at five minutes. It's it's another good start for Anderson. Like I said, Freddie Anderson, or Freddie Anderson, we'll get to Freddie Anderson. We're talking about Craig Anderson right now. We'll talk about the ex-Ottawa goalie before we talk about the ex-Toronto goalie later in this video. Um, so things get scrappy at the Bolts net, but there's no fights out of it. We get two minutes of four on four. Uh, Tampa then gets a power play. It doesn't score. Uh, not a game with a lot of power plays here. The Sabres press with five minutes left. There's a near miss for Olofsson. But before the period's over, Kalorn would score at 18-26, and Craig Anderson didn't see it. Little did we know that's the only puck that was going to get past him tonight. But it's 1-1 one, one after 1. Second period, Anderson's tested early. In fact, the shots are 6 to nothing in favor of Tampa Bay at 3 minutes. But Anderson's frustrating them. Tampa gets power play. That was their second and final. Anderson denies Col uh, Colton. Uh, bolts are controlling. The shots are 7 nothing uh, at, at 8 minutes and 30 seconds. So really, Buffalo, not much going on. No shots for the Sabres with 7.5 minutes left. In fact, with a minute and a half left, Tampa Bay getting pressure, but Kajula at 19:22 makes it two to one for Buffalo, and the frustration for Tampa is starting to really get through. So I understand that there's there's Stanley Cup hangover, which is the thing, and I think we're still seeing that with Tampa. No excuses made, right? Like again, it's just that's the thing. Um, and kudos to the Buffalo Sabres for taking full advantage tonight and for Craig Anderson for playing fantastic. So third period, Buffalo knows they can steal this. Something happens between the second and the third. Either Tampa Bay's confidence drops or Buffalo goes, hey, we can steal this. There was a three on two for the Sabres that misfires, but then Hannah Stroza with the absolute perfect shot scores at 425. That makes it three to one. Vinny Hannah Stroza finally takes that shot, gets his first goal. Come on, Vinny. Uh, Bolts tried to answer, but it was a really solid first half by the Buffalo Sabres. Uh, Cousins then took a head hit from Stamkos. They were calling a penalty on the play to Chernak. It should have been a 5-on-3. Um, Cousins was bleeding and everything. So, yeah, that, that should have been... I, I'm going to straight on say that should have been a penalty on Stamkos. It should have been a 5-on-3 for Buffalo. Uh, so Chernak ends up going to the box, but yeah. Uh, anyways, this is where you're, char you're starting to see frustration from Tampa and some some questionable plays. So they pull the goalie really early because this is what John Cooper does. And I, I know people are going to say that he does this to humiliate Tampa. I think he's just doing it because they're down. And who cares if you lose 8-1, to 7-1, to 5-1, to 3. It, it's still a loss, right? So Haig scores from Gergensen's at 14-25 into the empty net. Bulls pull the goalie again. Anderson gets shoved. Yeah. Uh, Ross Colton with the shove on Anderson, that draws a crowd. Um, and again, it was frustration by Tampa. But I, I, I saw that and I was like, so that's a penalty, right? Nope. Okie dokie. And then it's an empty net goal for Olofsson, his second of the game, uh, from Asplund and Thompson at 17-30. And your final score is 5-1 for Buffalo. They go to 4-1-1. One, one. Tampa drops to 2-3-1. Buffalo right now looks like hey, maybe playoffs. But remember... Buffalo got off to a 9-2-1 start a few seasons back. They get, they get off to these good starts. But there's no pressure. Unlike those years, it was like, oh, okay, so they're they're in. Right now, it's kind of like, eh, we'll see how many wins they can get. How far can they ride this? We'll see. Uh, the three stars in this one, Anderson, of course. Kajula's second. And Haig is third star. 
Shots were 14 to 9 Tampa in the first, 11 to 3 Tampa in the second, and then 13 11 Buffalo in the third. Like I said, they saw they could win it. Final shots are 36 to 25 for Tampa. Power plays 0 for 2 for the Bolts, 0 for 1 for Buffalo. Hits were 17 to 12 for Tampa. Elliott saves 20 out of 23. Anderson saves 35 out of 36. Looks good so far. We'll see how far it can go. Uh, next up, Capitals. Uh, so the Capitals in against the Senators. This is the game with a lot of goals in it, but scoring is, has been up for the last few days now after what was kind of a slow start to the season scoring-wise. Um, and so Samsona versus Forsberg. Forsberg would not last the whole game. Uh, Batherson would score at 227. It was not a good goal, that first one on Samsonov. Uh, the Sens were the better team in the first five minutes. Ovechkin, though, causes a press by the Capitals, and then they would eventually score on that. It's Oshie from, from Van Rijk at 626. Caps were pressing for the lead after that. Uh, Ovi getting some good looks. No goals to this point. He, of course, would get a goal or two in this game. Oshie would score his second from Mantha and McMichael at 11 minutes and 10 seconds. So McMichael on the board, and it's uh, it's two to one for Oshi. Um, so that's the first NHL point for McMichael. Uh, Paul then had a shot that was saved. Zaitsev hits the post, but then at 13:37, Jensen scores from Orlov and Sherry, and then at 15:43, it's four to one Capitals. Carlson scores from Eller and Faravari. So yeah, four to one. Uh, Gustafson goes in at this point. Because Forsberg didn't look great, but again, they're just letting him tee off, right? Caps press for another. Samsonov then saves when the Senators press. And in the last moments, last moments, Samsonov with some denial on the Senators. We go to the second period. No shots for the Senators in the first five minutes. But in that sixth minute, they get a goal. It's Norris from Zub and Batherson at 557. The Senators then get a power play. Kachuk couldn't bury one. We get a scrum after that. Uh, parade is on. You end up with a four on three for the Senators. They would score on the power play. It's Tierney with his third power play goal of the season from Ennis and Shabbat at nine minutes and 37 seconds. And then Batherson scores the second of the game from Kachuk at 11 minutes and 16 seconds. And then the Senators are pressing for the lead. That's right. It's four, four, but to their credit, uh, the Washington Capitals not done scoring. Uh, there's a turnover. Puck comes off the boards. Ovechkin's like, I can get to that. And he does. And he gets a breakaway goal. And at 16-27, he scores. So Ovechkin continues his goal a game pace. But it's going to get better for Ovechkin before the night is out. Oshie would add a hat trick goal from McMichael at 1952. So hat trick for Oshie. And it's 6-4 to four Washington after two periods. Third period, Stutz led a Paul. Near miss there. Norris couldn't bury one. But then it's Batherson. So dueling hat tricks here. Uh, second time this has happened with the Capitals and the, the Senators in recent history. Uh, last time it was Ovechkin and uh, Mike Fisher that had the dueling hat tricks. Batherson's hat trick goal from Norris and Shabbat at 632. Caps then get a power play. It doesn't score, but Ovechkin gets his second goal of the game from Wilson at 1046. That makes it 7 to 5. Uh, Senators get a power play. No. Uh, they call a timeout with 305 left. Pull the goaltender but they are unable to get any closer. So your final score is 7-5. to five. The Caps go to 4-0-2, and, and the Senators drop to 2-4. and four. That early start, that momentum, really seems to be gone now. And so reality is starting to set in. This team's got some work to do. Your three stars are Oshie, Batherson, and Ovechkin, the easiest three stars to name ever. Um, right up there with, with the one nothing shutout, where your goaltender's your first and second stars, and the guy who gets the goal is your third star, usually. Uh, shots 18 to 13 Washington in the first, 16 to 6 Ottawa in the second, 8 to 7 Ottawa in the third. Final shots 37 to 31 for the Sens. Power plays Washington 0 for 1, Ottawa 1 for 3. As their power play continues to be a good story this year, uh, hits 30 to 25 for Washington. Samsonov saves 32 out of 37. Kind of surprisingly ends up going the whole game. Uh, Forsberg 12 saves on 16 shots, and then Gustafson saves 12 out of 15. So, yeah. Um, Seven goals allowed by their goaltenders there. And for for the Sens, there's some work to get done now. All right, next up, Arizona. This was a game that wasn't supposed to be interesting. And it wasn't un until all of a sudden it got really interesting. So it was Hutton versus Knight. Hutton wouldn't finish the night, not through his own fault or, uh, or anything. Early edge to the Panthers. The shots were 2 nothing for them at seven minutes. And nothing was kind of how Arizona kept this for a long time. 
Um, Panthers press at nine minutes. Wegar with a net feed doesn't connect. Um, Kessel then misses wide. Timmons had one that was blocked. The shots are eight nothing with six and a half minutes left. And then the first shot Arizona gets goes in the net. It's Clayton Keller from Schmaltz at 1743. That's the nightmare scenario, right? You're getting shots, and then their first shot finally happens and it goes in the net. To the credit of the Panthers, they get a power play late and they score on it. It's Joe Thornton with his first point as a Panther, and it's a power play goal from Reinhardt and Montour at 1942, which ties it up. So in between the first and second period, it's announced that Hutton has a lower body injury. So Vamelka ends up taking over. Uh, Keller had an early drive that goes wide. Panthers press. Chikrin would clear that out. Uh, Coyotes were stuck on one shot for the game for a long time. Uh, it was it was weird uh, to see how many shots Florida had and that there was one shot for Arizona and it was tied 1-1, right? Now, Vetrano would score from Montour and Hornquist at six minutes. It's still one shot for Arizona and Vetrano has the second goal. And it was a really strong shift that led to that goal for Florida. The Coyotes get their second shot at the 28-minute mark, right around anyways. Um, Timmons then got hurt on a hit by Gudis. Uh, Panthers come out with a power play, which is not how that's supposed to work, but all right. Um, Ekblad ends up getting the power play marker from Huberto and Bennett at 10:19. Coyotes would then get a power play. It is unsuccessful. Uh, Barkov was denied when he recovered a turnover. Panthers then get a power play. There's a scrum at the Coyotes net on a save. And we go to the third period with this game 3-1. to one. Um, And Florida's way ahead in shots, but at least Arizona's threatening to get double-digit shots. Well, in the third period, Arizona, much like Buffalo, kind of, you know, comes on, realizing, hey, we might be able to steal one here. Uh, early Vimelka saved the Coyotes press at four minutes, but Huberto ends up getting a goal for Florida from Bennett and Tippett at 654, and that should be it, right? It's 4-1. to one. It's Arizona, a team that hadn't won all year. Well... First, it's O'Brien scoring his first of the season from Fisher and Strollman at 11.57. And then 34 seconds left, or 34 seconds later, I should say, Kessel scores his first from Labushkin and Larson. So at 12.31, that leaves John Quen or Joel Quenville uh, yelling at his, his, his team. Not John Quenville, that's his kid. Joel Quenville yelling at his team. Uh, so the Coyotes press with five minutes left. They would pull the goalie with a minute and 30 seconds left, which allows... The Florida Panthers to get the empty net goal to make it 5-3. to three. Duclair scores from Uyghur and Barkov at 19-21. And that takes the pressure off. Florida goes to 6-0. and This is a first. They're building on their record start. Arizona drops to 0-5-1 to start the season. Shots in this one, 11-1 Florida in the first. 20-7 Florida in the second. 13-10 Arizona in the third. Final shots, 41-21 for the Panthers. Power plays, Arizona had one. Didn't score on it. Florida scores on 2 out of 3. Hits were 33 to 23 for Arizona. Huberto, Montour, and Thornton are your three stars. Uh, Hutton saves 10 out of 11. Vimelka saves 26 out of 29. And Spencer Knight, the numbers aren't great, but he was kind of left hung out to dry. He saves 18 out of 21. And I'm sure that his Florida teammates apologized to him after the game because, yeah, this this was <laughs> it was it shouldn't have been an interesting game. And then all of a sudden, this is a really interesting game we got going on here. Uh, even Tyson Nash sounded kind of surprised this game got uh, competitive late. Next up, Calgary. So for the New York Rangers, they won every game on their road trip. It wasn't pretty. Well, tonight, some of the things they were getting away with on the road trip, they didn't tonight. And for Calgary, they continue this good streak they've been on. Good game for them. Uh, it's Markstrom versus Shesterkin. Uh, Markstrom continues to be a really good story. Uh, Shesterkin's numbers take a little bit of a hit with this game today. Shesterkin stops a Lindholm shot early. Panarin then had a break. Markstrom saves on that. Uh, Flames had the edge of the half neared. In fact, halfway through this first period, the shots were 7-3 to three for Calgary. Very good start to a road game. That's how you want it to go. Uh, Panarin had a drive that was defended. Truba with a high stick draws a crowd. They did not call the high stick on Truba. They should have. Uh, two minutes of 4-on-4 four four follows. Tanev would score before the period's out from Goudreau and Lindholm at 18.50. So, Lindholm continues his hot streak, gets an assist there. It's 1-0 going into the second. Early in the second, Andrew Mangiapane. That's right, Kimber. He scored for your your, your little uh, hockey pool there. Two minutes and nine seconds. Um, he told me he took Mangiapane. I'm like, he's he's excellent. Good call. Uh, so Rangers were badly outshot thus far in the game. The score is indicating who's the better team right now uh, at this stage. Power play then for the Rangers. It does not succeed. 
Uh, the Rangers press, but no shots as well going on there. Panarin in beast mode, but there's pressure, and yet he's not able to get to the net. They're not getting those prime opportunities with Panarin out there. Uh, the Rangers push at the half. The Flames would get a power play in the second half, but the score is 2 nothing going into the third. Early on, some turnovers by the Rangers. I noticed in their own zone, they're just, they're, they're not, there's blind passes going on. They're forcing passes. And as turnovers going to Calgary, who up two to nothing, they're just trying to kill it off, right? Uh, the Rangers get a power play. There was a shorthanded two on one for the Flames that just doesn't quite click. And then Dryden Hunt scores from Truba and Keandre Miller at 525. That makes it two to one. So Calgary doesn't melt down with this. This is one of those things that you watch for. So how's Calgary going to re respond to this? this uh, situation they don't they don't melt down at all uh monahan fires one high and then at 8 13 blake coleman scores from backland and pitlick so pitlick with his first i believe that's his first point is a flame and that makes it three to one there's then a press by the flames with nine minutes left the rangers cleared it out but on the on the ensuing uh bringing in of the puck by the flames they score uh, it's a rush chance goal by Backlund from Coleman and Hannafin at 11 minutes and 32 seconds and it wasn't a goal that Shesterkin's going to be happy with either so now you're getting into it's four to one and you're not that impressed with the the, the miss by Shesterkin maybe Georgiev gets into the next game because Georgiev's last game he was pretty good right um 136 left the Flames get a power play so that ends it but Manjapani scores on said power play from Anderson and Dubé at 1955 the Flames win this one 5-1. They go to 3-1-1. One, one. The Rangers drop to 4-2-1. and one. It's an upsetting result at home. The shots are 15-7 Calgary in the first, 11-10 Rangers in the second, 12-11 Calgary in the third. Final shots 37-29 for the Flames. Power plays 1-2 for two for Calgary, 0-2 oh for, for the Rangers. Hits were 27-20 for the Rangers. Markstrom saves 28 out of 29 at one end, and Shesterkin saves 32 out of 37 at the other. And so for the Flames really good game tonight for them and for the rangers they got to go back to the drawing board for the next one and now i got to change boards okay so uh toronto and carolina this is the game that everybody's been talking about since it took place um carolina's a contender carolina's off to a great great start carolina looks like a team that's very confident very talented talent up and down the lineup toronto is fighting it so it's campbell versus anderson uh, Ayers was apparently on the siren to start this game, so the David Ayers bit was tied in. I, I had that in the thumbnail for the preview as well. Um, Slavin defends on Matthews' rush, but Matthews would get that goal, and this is his 200th from bunting at 3 minutes and 25 seconds, and it's a wraparound goal. And it's one that Freddie, eh, maybe Freddie would want that back, but Matthews with that 200th goal, he's off the schneid. We'll see, you know, if, if this gets him going. It did not get the Leafs going. Uh, the shots were 5-3 to three for the Canes at 7 minutes. Uh, Carolina gets a power play. Uh, Richie with a, a brutal-looking check on Pesci. The Canes didn't like it. Uh, the Leafs were stuck on four shots for a large portion of that first period as well. Uh, and it, But it's one nothing Toronto after one. So they were outplayed, but they're ahead. Second period, early chances uh, for the Canes. Uh, Campbell making saves. Uh, Leafs get a power play. It is unsuccessful. It's Sebastian Ajo that ties the game from Baron Svechnikov at 7.02. And then the Canes feel it. They're just pressing for the lead. Lawrence scores from Martinuk at 9 minutes and 25 seconds. Tavares would end up hitting a post. Uh, Canes were controlling the play. They're up 2-1. to one. Transition. The transition game for Carolina is lethal. Both Carolina and Florida, uh, you can have them pinned down in their own zone. And then as soon as that puck's turned over, they are down the ice. And you have to be ready because they can be they can be deadly. Um, so Leafs get a power play. And that power play just didn't seem right. So uh, the best chances might have been for Nick Ritchie. Uh, he had two pretty good shots, but it's killed off. And then Niederreiter, before the period's out, scores from Slavin and Stahl at 16.49. The Canes then push for another. Again, once they get that goal from Aho, it's... Just, you know, let's go. We're all going at that end of the rink. And Toronto didn't really have a lot of uh, fight back, even though the shots would tell you they did. Half of the shots by Carolina end up in the net. That's where that transition comes in. Third period, Matthews with a wraparound. This time, Freddie Anderson was ready and saved it. Shots were five apiece at eight minutes. Aho was robbed by Campbell, who had a good game. Getting lost in this is Jack Campbell had a pretty good game. 
Uh, Canes get a power play. We then up, end up with four on four. Trocek with a penalty. So then there's a short power play for Toronto. Uh, Carolina gets another power play. It's unsuccessful. Uh, Leafs get a three on two. Nylander misses one wide. They pulled the goalie with four minutes left because what else are you going to do? Uh, but the Leafs ice it with 308 left, so the goalie has to go back in. Of course, they pull them again, which allows the empty net goal to be scored by Svechnikov. And Slavin, with the assist, his second marker of the game, second assist, at 19 minutes, and that makes your final 4-1 to one for Carolina. Carolina's 5-0. and oh, Toronto drops to 2-4-1. and one. So, I've done a video on Montreal. I've done a video on Chicago. I think Toronto is next. I've seen requests for Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay, I'm, I'm going to give it a little bit more before we get into a video, but I, I think Toronto is next. The three stars in this game, Anderson, Lawrence, and Slavin. And I think with Freddie Anderson's performance, it's worthy to look at players who were with Toronto last year and how they're performing in other locations, like Zach Hyman and Freddie Anderson. Uh, shots were 15-8 Carolina in the first, 8-6 Toronto in the second, 15-9 Carolina in the third. Final shots, 36-25 for the Hurricanes. Both teams go for three on the power play. The hits were 19-16 in favor of Toronto. Campbell saves 32 out of 35. Anderson saves 24 out of 25. He has won all five games for Carolina. His save percentage is 946. He has saved 141 of 149 pucks. So very good start to the season for Anderson and a pretty strong start to the season for Carolina, who got the job done. And now Toronto moves on to Chicago. So... And that's where it could get interesting because Chicago's desperate for a win and so is Toronto. So may not be seeing Austin Matthews with his hand to his ear in that game. Not in this instance. I've already seen that highlight a few times. That's like today and that's why I mention it now because they're already showing it a bunch because that was that was controversy at the time. Uh, Dallas. Dallas, it against Columbus. Uh, this was the Elvis show. And the Elvis show is impressive this year. Uh, for Columbus, if they're going to make noise in the Metro, and right now they look like they want to, uh, they're going to need Yeoman's work from Elvis Merzlikens, and he looks like he's ready to provide it. So it was Holtby versus Merzlikens. Early chance for the Stars. In fact, the shots are are 3 to nothing for the Stars at 5 minutes. I wrote 6, but it's 5. Bjorkstrand would score from Roslovic and Hoffman at 5.53. So, uh, yeah. Uh, I believe that was the first shot for Columbus, and it goes in the net. So th these things happen. Uh, crossbar then for Haskinen. Dallas gets a power play. That was a no. Columbus had one shot halfway through this period, and it's one nothing in their favor. So it's like Arizona all over again, right? They have one shot. It goes in the net. Uh, so Corrali had a shot that was saved. Columbus then pressed. They would get chances before the end of the period. Columbus gets a power play. It doesn't work. Line A had a chance that went wide. Line A doesn't get on the board tonight, but he had opportunities. Second period, early chance uh, for for Columbus. He had, they had a couple of them there. Uh, they they clearly, um, both teams were better in the second period, I thought, than the first. Line A drives one wide. Gurianov had a shot that was blocked. Uh, Columbus, did they get a goal? No, the puck did not cross the line. So uh, initially awarded as a goal, and when they looked at it on the replay, the puck didn't actually go in. Stars get a power play. That was a no. And then Hoffman scores. believe that's his first of the season from Bjorkstrand at 10-39. Uh, big saves by Merzlikens as they're up 2-0. Power play by Columbus. That is unsuccessful. Uh, Sillinger versus Gurianov. Who saw that fight coming? Yeah, things getting kind of scrummy. Uh, and the Stars come out of it with a power play. Sure. All right. Uh, third period. Uh, Sagan had a shot that was saved. Columbus finishes off the kill that started at the end of the second period. Uh, Line A with a good break there, and Holtby makes a really nice save to keep the score within two. Um, Columbus presses. The Stars did clear it out. Chances for the Stars, but no goals. Uh, Gavrikov got shaken up uh, around the middle of that period as well. Uh, ben was denied, and Elvis, you can't say enough good things about Elvis right now. He's just very good at what he does, which is goaltending. Um... In, in case you didn't know, welcome to the channel. It's a good goaltender. Uh, so, Wierenski would score from Corrali and Robinson at 514, and that makes it 3 0. Columbus gets a power play. It doesn't succeed, but it takes two minutes off the clock, so it kind of does. They get another power play. Again, doesn't get a goal, but it takes two more minutes off the clock. Goalie pull by Dallas with four minutes left. They would eventually score, too. Sagan scores to break the shutout from Lindell and Suter at 1741. 
But then they pull the goalie, and the empty net goal is scored by Texier for Morensky at 18-11. So Morensky with a goal and an assist. Your three stars in this game, Merzlikens, Hoffman, and Bjorkstrand. Uh, shots 7-6 Dallas in the first, 12-10 Dallas in the second, 13-10 Dallas in the third. Final shots 32-26 for Dallas. So Dallas tonight played well, just Elvis was better. Uh, power plays 0-3 for, for Dallas, 0-4 for, for Columbus. Hits were 22-13 for Dallas, so they outshot them and outhit them. Holtby, 22 saves on 25 shots. And Merzlikens, 31 saves on 32 shots. Earned his paycheck tonight. So for Dallas, they'll they'll have to try again next game. But they drop to 3-3 three and three and Columbus goes to 4-2. and two. Very good start for Columbus. Uh, Kings. So last time these teams played, it was a 7-3 win for C uh, St. Louis. It was a shellacking by the St. Louis Blues. I didn't have to pay a lot of attention to it. Tonight, this one was the one that started an hour after all the others, and I thought, well, we'll see how it goes. We'll see if I need both columns. I didn't. Spoiler alert, although you can see that. Well, I kind of did. Uh, so it was Quick versus Huso. Huso's first start of the season. Uh, shots are 4 nothing for the Blues at two minutes. The Blues were fantastic, and Quick really was very sharp here. Uh, all Blues for the first, like, seven minutes. It's just constantly in the King's end. Uh, Tarasenko was denied. Not for the whole night, he wasn't. Uh, quick stops a Thomas chance. The Blues, halfway through this period, had 15 shots, which prorates out to 90. So I was like, okay, the Blues are on pace for 90 shots. This is a little high. So the Kings press with nine minutes left. Perron fires one high when they get their chance. Late power play for the Blues. Sean Walker got hurt. Looked like a knee injury. He was putting absolutely no weight on that knee as he left the ice. I'm hoping it's not as bad as it looked. I like Sean Walker. Uh, Shorthanded chance for Edler. Uh, Thomas ends up hitting the side of the net. That power play's killed off. It's scoreless going into the second. Second period, we get some pressure by the Blues at two minutes. More pressure by the Blues at five. Uh, Kupari then had a chance that was saved. The Kings get a power play. Huso was tested. Making some saves. So this is where Huso starts to become more prominent in the game, right? Uh, Velarde had a pass where he should have shot during that during that stretch. Uh, Kempe misses one wide, and the power play's killed off. But it had four shots, so the Kings had opportunities there. Much better period for LA. Uh, the Blues pressured with six minutes left. Shen was then denied by Quick when St. Louis got their opportunities. They would press with four minutes left. But we're still scoreless going into the third period. In said third period, rush chances both ways early. Both teams getting those opportunities. And and for a game that was scoreless after two periods, this game was uh, was pretty pretty fun to watch, really. Uh, Tarasenko breaks the scoreless tie from Krug and Thomas at three minutes and eight seconds. The Kings tried to answer. Uh, we get a power play for LA. Kaliev with a blast that was saved by Husev. Kaliev had opportunities. He's going to get some goals in the NHL. Uh, Quick then, it was killed off. There were four shots by LA on that power play. Uh, Quick then saved a chance from Neal, and it was right under the arm. It was right here. And James Neal was just, he really thought that was going in. Uh, Kings then get a power play. Arvidsson with a near miss. It's killed off. Uh, the Kings press with eight minutes left, and eventually it's Tarasenko getting a second goal of the game from Barbashev, and it is a beautiful breakaway pass by Barbashev to Tarasenko, and good luck, Jonathan Quick. It's a deceptive goal. It's one of those ones where when you look at it in real time, you're like, well, that's good, I guess. But when you when you really pay attention to how Tarasenko shoots it, when he shoots it, Quick didn't have a chance. So that makes it 2-0. With 344 left, the Blues get a power play. They don't score on it. Eventually, LA pulls the goalie, and Perron hits the empty net from O'Reilly and Scandella at 1845. Not the prettiest empty netter you've ever seen, but they all count. So that makes it 3-0, and that's your final. Uh, Huso gets his second career shutout. The interesting thing was Bernie Federko in between the second and third period talked about shutouts. And he said, yeah, it'd be nice if Huso got a shutout tonight. And they were kind of like, you were saying this? Yeah, there is no such thing as jinxing shutouts. Uh, so St. Louis goes to 5-0. and I predicted it this morning in the preview. I said they were 5-0, and and now they are. So I'm not a liar. Because uh, there were people saying he just jinxed us. I didn't. The Kings drop to 1-4-1. and It's looking like a long season already. Uh, three stars, Tarasenko, Huso, and Thomas. The shots 18 to 7 for St. Louis in the first, 12 to 3 LA in the second, and then 15-14 LA in the third. I said it was a wide open third period. 
Final shots, 35-34 to 34 for St. Louis. Power plays, LA goes 0 for 3, St. Louis 0 for 2. Hits were 21-14 to 14 for St. Louis. Quick saves, 32 out of 34. Huso saves all 35. That's why he's the second star. I might have made him first star, but again, Tarasenko, Huso, and Thomas all had really good games. Krug now has a five-game point streak going too, so that's kind of fun. And uh, things are going pretty well for St. Louis right now. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.